Hello everyone! Today's webinar is highlighting the Urasenke tradition of tea. In Urasenke, we call the Japanese tea ceremony Chado, the way of tea. Urasenke is the largest Japanese tea ceremony group. In Seattle, Urasenke is represented by Chado Urasenke Tankokai Seattle Association or simply Tankokai Seattle Association. The association was founded 50 years ago. We are a non-profit organization and currently have 100 members. The association is a part of the worldwide Urasenke membership organization called Tankokai, which was founded in 1940 in Kyoto, Japan. The main mission of Tankoka Seattle Association is to spread the Japanese tea ceremony in the Seattle area. One of the features of the Seattle Japanese Garden is its tea house. Every tea house has its poetic name. The one in the Seattle Japanese Garden is called Shosei-an, which means the arbor of murmuring pines. Tankoka Seattle Association has been presenting the Japanese tea ceremony in Shosean since 1982, soon after the tea house was inaugurated by the then Grand Tea Master of Rasenke, Ho Unsai. In fact, Ho Unsai is a tea master who named this tea house Shosean. The sign his calligraphy of Shosean is still hung on the upper wall of the tea house. Chado, the way of tea, is the art of preparing tea. In practical terms, Chado involves a host making a bowl of tea, combining a proper amount of matcha powdered green tea with hot water for guests. The host prepares an appropriate setting, including the location, tea utensils, scroll, flowers, incense, matcha, sweets, and so on, and the guests appreciate everything they see, hear, smell, taste, and touch in the tea house. There are a number of ways to show chado. In today's webinar, we will show you an example of a small tea gathering, Chakai, depicted by a host and two guests. Let's begin. The scroll is one of the most important items in the tea house so that the guest must look at it as soon as they enter the tea room. Today's scroll reads Matsu ni Kokon no Ironashi. The calligraphy was done by the 15th generation grand tea master Ho Unsai. Matsu means the pine tree and the whole phrase is translated that the pine tree is always green, but it means a lot more. Because of its evergreen nature, the pine tree has many good features in the Japanese culture, including stability, strength, long life, consistency, and even equality. So it's a good thing to have matsu or the pine tree in the tea room. The guests must also look at the flowers. We always use seasonal flowers. The flower base today is a bamboo basket called seserangi kango. Kango is a basket and seserangi means a sound of stream. 
Kago is often used in summer months. The small object on the right hand side is an incense container. There are three small pieces of sandalwood inside. We tend to display an incense container when there is no charcoal ceremony. The bamboo object is called kekkai. Kekkai is a boundary marker, originally a Buddhist term. In Chado, kekkai means that at this side of kekkai, the host makes tea, and the guests sit the other side of kekkai. The kettle today is hailstone or alare. The brazier is in Chosen style or a Chosen bro made of bronze. Japanese sweets are given to each guest. Before the tea making procedure begins, everybody in the tea room bows together with the host. The host enters the tea room holding a water jar. She then brings in a tea bowl and a tea caddy. The tea caddy contains matcha powdered green tea. She brings in a rinse water receptacle and a bamboo radle. The host purifies the tea caddy and the tea scoop. The host offers the guest to have the sweets. While the guest is eating the sweets, the host pours some hot water into the tea bowl to mix matcha powdered green tea with hot water using bamboo whisk. When the tea is ready, the assistant gives the tea bowl to the guest. The first guest places the bowl between her and the next guest and says, Osakini, excuse me to have the tea before you, and then says to the host, Otemae chodai itashimasu. Thank you for making the tea. The host makes a second bowl of tea for the second guest.
The second guest places the ball between her and the first guest and says, お商売いたします。I'm going to have the tea with you. Then to the host, お手前頂戴いたします。Thank you for making the tea. Place the ball on her left palm, slightly bow to express thanks. Turn the ball twice clockwise to avoid drinking from the front side. The, this gesture of not drinking from the best side expresses your modesty and also respect to the maker of the tea ball. Then, finished drinking, she wipes the rim of the ball where her lips touched, wipes the fingers with cash paper, turns the ball counterclockwise twice. And puts it down to closely look at the ball. The tea caddy and the tea scoop are put out for the guests so that they can closely look at them. Each guest examines those items one by one. They look at each item from the top first and then touch it gently. Look at from the top again. And forward it to the next guest. The host explains what kind of tea caddy it is and who made it. She also discusses the maker of the tea scoop and its poetic name. チャド is full of hospitality. The host does all preparations to make the guests happy. Guests must use their five senses to see. Hear, smell, taste, and touch, and appreciate everything the host did for them. The reason why Chado attracts many people is that Chado is for everyone, regardless of nationality, race, religion, and age. People are moved by Chado. This tradition of tea has continued from generation to generation and will be preserved to the next generations. Chado values appeal to everyone. Some people say that having a bowl of tea in a tea house makes them feel peaceful and calm. In fact, they feel calm as if they were momentarily away from their busy daily lives. We hope that people get to know Chado. Please don't think Chado is difficult or too formal. Let's just sit and enjoy a bowl of tea.
we did it. Hooray. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that was such a beautiful video. Oh, thank you. Uh, for anyone who had any sound issues at the end there or uh, wants to see this in better quality, uh, we will have it up on our YouTube channel in just a few days or maybe a week actually. Um, yes, so now we are on to the Q&A and thank you so much for everyone who has shared questions. And also thank you to the person who commented, uh, you did it in the Q&A box because we did it and it made me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think there's one really lovely question here that I wanna start with, because I, I think it's a common one. How often do people in Japan practice tea ceremony? Uh you mean the tea practitioner or the, the Japanese people in general? Well, let's go with both because I always think it's interesting to hear the experience of someone who's an expert and the experience of someone <laughs> who is just a novice. Well, in Japan, uh, I would say only a very small number of people practice tea and experience any kind of tea ceremony in Japan. In mm. fact, my students go back to Japan and they say they didn't do anything about tea while they stay in Japan. So when they come back, they start restart their practice here. Uh, that means there are not many opportunities for uh, people in general to see or experience Japanese tea ceremony in Japan. For tea practitioners in Japan, of course, they go to see uh, their teachers, respective teachers, almost uh, every week. And there are some tea venues, uh, tea gatherings and uh, tea demonstrations uh, here and there. But these are known only for um, tea practitioners. So pe people, uh, people who don't know anything about tea ceremony will not have any opportunities uh, to participate in those tea gatherings and uh, tea demonstrations. That's really interesting. Do yes. you think that it's similar at all um, to sort of the English high tea ceremony where maybe someone will go do it for a special occasion or for fun? I think it's a, a kind of a special interest group. And mm. those who are interested in uh, Chado, they are very uh, active and participate uh, in practices and the tea gatherings. But most of most uh, Japanese people, particularly younger generations, they have other interests, sports as, or um, some kind of uh, entertainment. Uh, mm -hmm. and they are not keen to study traditional Japanese traditional culture such as uh, tea ceremony. Well, I'm so glad that you and the rest of Urasenka Tankokai <laughs> are working to keep this tradition alive. Yes, and so mm -hmm. we are working hard uh, so that uh, people who do not know uh, tea ceremony at all will have a glimpse to see or experience tea ceremony. So that's why uh, uh, tea house, such as in uh, Japanese tea ceremony, Japanese uh, garden is very uh, important for us. And uh, uh, Shosei is one of our uh, main venues to introduce Chado to the general public. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I have another really good question here. Okay. Um, what happens when you have someone who uh, can't kneel comfortably anymore for tea ceremony, whether maybe they have arthritis or maybe some sort of disability that makes it difficult for them to kneel for mm -hmm. tea ceremony? Uh, in Shosean, uh, we have chairs, uh, so they will be able to sit outside the tea room, outside Shosean, and take a look at our demonstrations. Mm -hmm. in, that, uh, in our tea gatherings, we don't have to have tatami mats to do tea gatherings. We have uh, a so-called ryurei or um, 
table settings, meaning that all guests will sit on chairs and the host will sit on chair and use a table, like a lower mm -hmm. dining table like setting to make a, a bowl of tea. So uh, people who cannot kneel or sit on tatami or sit on the seiza style, they can participate in those uh, Ryure style tea ceremony. In fact, the Japanese uh, tea ceremony that we offer at uh, New Year uh, gathering mm -hmm. called Hatsugama, everybody, all the guests will sit on chairs so they don't have to sit on tatami. Oh, and that's many, nice. many other venues, uh, except Shosean, we offer uh, op options to uh, show tea, tea ceremony on that kind of uh, setting. So uh, make tea on the table and all guests sit on chairs. That's and, really uh, interesting. Yeah, it's actually sitting on tatami is one of the biggest challenges not only for non-Japanese, but also for Japanese. I think it's very hard to do. You have to practice a lot. Yes. Comfortable. Yeah, yeah well, but, uh, you know, once you start practicing tea ceremony, you get used to it and you mm -hmm. have to practice how to sit comfortably on tatami. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned there being different types of tea ceremony, and there's actually a question about this too. So you mentioned that um, you can have a very informal tea ceremony, but are there more formal versions of the tea ceremony maybe than the one that you usually do in Shosean at the garden? Uh, the, the tea ceremony in Shosean is always informal in my opinion. The, a uh, formal tea ceremony is actually not only serving thin tea, which we usually do in Shosean, but also the main part is actually to serve thick tea. Thick tea uh, involves more matcha powder and less hot water. So the tea itself looks like a green paste. And mm -hmm. uh, so, in the formal tea ceremony, we serve uh, meals, sake, <laughs> thin oh, tea, wow. thin tea, and we do charcoal ceremony as well. So the whole length is probably close to four hours. Wow. Uh, so in Shosean, we are just showing the last part, which is serving thin tea. Uh, oh. so, so that would be the end usually of the tea ceremony. That's right, that's right. Huh. So beforehand in the former uh, tea ceremony we call chaji, we do charcoal ceremony, we serve meals, sake, and uh, we do uh, another charcoal ceremony and then thick tea and thin tea. So it's a very lengthy process. Yeah. Um, how often do you usually do that ceremony, the longer full chaji, you said? Uh -huh. uh, before the pandemic, I, <laughs> I offered my students opportunity to participate in chaji, uh, the formal uh, four hour <laughs> long uh, tea practice, twice a year, one for the summer season, one for the uh, uh, winter season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. But, that it's, must be but very it's, on, it's only for my students and not for, you know, uh, the general public. So yeah, I think you would have to charge a lot of money to justify no, no, it's not that expensive. But. Oh, okay. but it's a lot of time. Yeah, um, it, it takes a lot of time and uh, pre preparation and effort. And in fact, each participant must make one kaiseki dish. That's oh! It. Yes, so, so <laughs> it's like a potluck, but we have a certain order to serve certain dish. So that's another thing that uh, we must study. Yeah, there's many different things that you have to study. Right. So speaking of your studies, we have another really, really good question here asking you to um, share, is there a piece of wisdom or advice 
that you were given by an instructor that you still share with your students today? Uh, the, uh, the basic philosophy is the same as 400 something years ago that uh, Sandiku started the uh, tea ceremony of uh, today in today's shape, uh, the foundation of Chado, which mm -hmm. is Wa K Sejak. Wa means harmony. K means respect, say is purity, and Jack is tranquility. Those are the elements that I always remind my students uh, that uh, they should think about it and uh, implement it, not only in the tea room, but also in their own lives. But these mm -hmm. are very important uh, philosophy of Chado as well as the philosophy of lives, uh, everybody's life. That is a really beautiful answer. I think it also answers um, another question that we have here, which I will share just in case you want to add. But we have this question. Are there any benefits that you've realized from pa practicing tea in areas of your life not related to tea ceremony? I think that uh, the uh, it's wrong to think that uh, Japanese tea philosophy is only limited in the tea house. It should be uh, in their everyday life. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that, for example, to respect everyone uh, or to have harmony with other people and to have some quiet moment now and then. Mm -hmm. These kind of things are not only uh, for the tea ceremony, but also for uh, your own life. You know, you have to have these kind of elements uh, on a daily basis, so. I have, that is very lovely. And I have a silly follow-up question, which is from okay. me, not from our audience. So, you know, tea has a lot of antioxidants and they say it's very good for you. Do you think yeah. that tea is why you still look so young and fresh? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I think, uh, well, the, um, you know, everybody knows that uh, matcha green tea has, uh, nutrition and mm -hmm. uh, vitamin C and uh, antioxidant and so on and so forth. And uh, I drink tea as well, but not only the drinking, the, the fact that drinking tea, but also thinking about things like uh, the, the philosophy that I talked about mm -hmm. and also um, preparing uh, tea gatherings and uh, preparing my tea class and all kinds of things requires lots of thinking, lots of preparation and so on and so forth. And that kind of thing, in addition to my, you know, uh, professional work and other obligations uh, makes me busy <laughs> and, uh, uh, I don't have time to get old or to get sick and so, <laughs> so that's fantastic. Uh, yeah that's the key to be uh, active and do things and do it uh, in a, a positive way all the time so I'll ask an easier question for you now um, okay what season or occasion is a favorite or, or is meaningful uh, for you? Wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. Uh, with temai or chadoku or scroll or flower. And for those of us who don't know quite as much about tea ceremony, what are uh, temai or chadoku? Uh, temai is uh, the tea making procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, dogu is tea utensils. Okay. And uh, it also, uh, uh, the question uh, is a bit complicated because the themes that we use for each tea gathering, uh, depending on the season, mm -hmm. and uh, 
the season is, I mentioned earlier that there is a, a two large uh, seasons. One is winter season and the other is summer season. Summer seasons begin in early May and ends uh, at the end of October. And winter season begins early November and ends at the end of uh, April. And in Shosean, uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to do a uh, winter season demonstration. Mm -hmm, because the garden are, is closed. Yeah, the garden is closed most of the month. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I don't think many people have seen winter season set up. Uh, but winter season, we have several large events, uh, annual events, such as uh, in January, we have Hatsugama or Fast Kettle. And no, in November, we have open of uh, the uh, Sunken Hearth, Hod Robiraki. And these are very important events for tea, tea practitioners. And we have certain uh, tea utensils we use for the new year, as well as for the open of the Sunken Hearth. Uh, in summer, we have, uh, just like in, um, in Shosean, we have uh, Tsukimi Chakai, for example, moon viewing mm -hmm. or maple viewing and those kind of interesting events going on. And so every, in every season, we have certain things that we can highlight. And mm -hmm. for that, we collect uh, appropriate uh, tea utensils, uh, including scrolls and flowers and uh, tea balls and so on and so forth. And mm -hmm. that's one of the uh, uh, challenges as well as um, pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> to collect for each season. Yes. I imagine right. you could collect yeah. many, many bowls if you wanted to. Right, right. But as, as, as I explained in my video, um, you know, the host must do everything to please the guests. So uh, guests, uh, you know, have certain expectations before they come to the tea gathering and they are uh, expecting um, uh, nice tea balls, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, nice tea, nice sweets, <laughs> uh, beautiful flowers and nice scrolls and so on. So um, as I said, it's a challenge and also pressure for tea practitioners. Oh, that's really nice. So I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Okay. So uh, the first one that I'll ask from one of our uh, participants here is, how do you feel about interest in tea from non-Japanese people? And do you accept non-Japanese students? Oh yes, of course, I have several non-Japanese students and uh, they are very keen to learn Japanese culture, uh, including Japanese language, as well as tea procedures and so on. And uh, uh, they are also interested in kimono, for example, and they come mm. here to practice uh, tea ceremony uh, in kimono every week. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, only challenge is I think that there are not many um, books and textbooks written in English. Mm -hmm. So that may be a challenge, but uh, any, uh, anyone, um, regardless of their language or the culture and background and race, of course, uh, religion and so on, uh, anyone can learn tea ceremony. So uh, we are welcome, Takoka is welcome to have mm -hmm. many non-Japanese people to be on our group and study tea ceremony together. Well, I think after this presentation, many people will be encouraged to begin their uh, Great, tea yeah, so <laughs> yes, please contact us uh, either through uh, uh, the uh, Japanese Garden website or through our website or our email address. Mm -hmm. So I think the final question, and you did just reference it a little bit, but I will ask, you say there are not many books on tea ceremony in English, but 
if you had to recommend one, do you think there would be a book or two that you could recommend on t uh, Yes, I was looking at the uh, uh, my bookshelf today, and mm -hmm. there, if if people are interested in general, I'm talking about non-Japanese people, non-English uh, speaking people, uh, who would be interested in shadow, uh, particularly from the perspective of various aspects, such as the uh, architecture of tea house, uh, the history, um, tea utensils, uh, flowers, sweets, mm -hmm. and so on, those elements. Uh, I have a book uh, written by uh, uh, Rasenke Tea Masters. Uh, the current and the uh, previous uh, called, I don't know if you can see it, Urasenke Chado Textbook. Oh, yes. Th th this was written for mainly tea practitioners, Urasenke, but it's also good for people who do not know anything about tea ceremony. It has got history and all kinds of elements, uh, bits and pieces, and uh, not in depth, but uh, and, but the details, enough details to know uh, a lot about urasenke or chado culture. So mm -hmm. I would recommend that and you can, um, I think, buy this through uh, Amazon or whatever. And if you don't know how to get it, you can contact Kanko Kai and we can tell you uh, how, to, how to order or how to take a look. That's very kind of you. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, thank you um, for being here this evening and taking time to answer all these wonderful questions. I think with that, it's six o'clock and we'll wrap up okay. um, for the evening. If anyone has any further questions, please feel free to reach out on the Seattle Japanese Garden website or the Urasenke Tankokai website. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jessa. Okay. Thank you, Keiko. It's so good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.